burned all the other uh, manuscripts. So why did he burn those manuscripts? Do you know? That's your point? I'm asking the question, no, yeah. You're asking, but that, is that your point? Okay, I'm asking, okay, my point is this. Almost nothing I can tell you about Islam that you don't already know. All right. You know about Islam. Well, I but don't know we're having are. a conversation, yeah. we're having a conversation, yeah, yeah. and the conversation is specifically about Islam yeah. and the superiority of Islam. And I'm saying to you, fundamentally, Islam is superior to all other way of life and one count. That's right. Which one is that? Islam is the staunchest and the most severe against idolatry. According to the Bible, so let, me, let me finish, let me finish please. Give me half a minute. Can, can I have half a minute? According to the Bible and according to the Quran, idolatry is the worst sin. It is the sin that is considered treason against God. It is the sin that if you die on idolatry, you will never see God's mercy. You will never see God's paradise. You will never see God's face due to idolatry. However, Islam is purely and 100% against idolatry more than any other faith. As regards to Christians and the Bible, for the vast majority of Christianity today, they subscribe to idolatry. They themselves have become idolaters. So Islam is superior to all other faiths because it has the purest, the staunchest, and the strongest firmness against idolatry. So you mean that Allah is one, right? No, when I talk about idolatry, it is to understand that the creation of God is not equal to God, nor above God. God is above his creation, his far, and everything of his creation is subjected and in submission and in obedience to God. So to put a human being or to put the creation equal to God or above God is idolatry. And Islam, Islam as a faith, it stands firm in any other faith. There's no gaps, no room for idolatry as well as Christians. Thanks, um, do you mind if I just time this because I don't want to have you speak like 80% of the time and I speak 20%. How about we speak 50-50? You speak for 30 seconds, you ask for 30 seconds, I gave it to you, right? Yeah. I didn't interrupt. So I'll get 30 seconds or let's do 60 seconds each. How's that? Yes. Okay, fine. So, um, now, um, the question that I asked was what was uh, so beautiful about Islam that, uh, you know, should convince me that Islam is from God, right? That was my question. Your response is that Islam is the only religion that says God is uh, one, right? I didn't say that. No, Sorry. Or, or, no, no, or, 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 no. Or I didn't say that. You explained was that no, no, no. The God, there's nothing equal to God. God is the, you know, is the, the, the creation cannot be like God, right? Anything, the God is above everything, right? Is that right? I'll carry on. Right. Now, the question uh, that I'm going to ask you is, if that's the case, idolatry is the biggest sin, shirk is the biggest sin, that means that Allah is one, yeah? Is that is that what it is? That, but that's not what I'm trying to say. No, but I'm asking that. No. You're asking, asking me that, but I'm saying that's how not what I'm trying to say. How many gods are in Islam? No, no, that's not what I'm trying to say. Is there one more than one god in Islam? Well, first of all, let, let, let me say this. Let me say this. When we're talking about idolatry, idolatry has fundamentally six different manifestations. There's six different manifestations in idolatry. Yeah. Now, my question to you is, let us come to a common understanding that as followers of the Bible, according to the Bible, idolatry is actually treason against God. It's the sin that will never be forgiven if a person die in that. Is that accurate? Is that correct? Yeah, of course. Right. And according to the Jewish scriptures, to the best of your knowledge and my knowledge, we don't have to fight over this. According to the Jewish scriptures, idolatry again is unforgivable. And the, the, the Jewish Christians and Muslims, their core message, core, central message is against all forms of idolatry. Yeah, you mean like uh, in the Old Testament, God says, uh, Israel, oh Israel, know that God is one, yeah? It says that in the Old Testament. No, I'm saying that's the core message. But yeah. they said it in the old, the new, I'm saying the core historical yeah, yeah. So you're message. you're not telling me anything I don't know. No, no, but I mean, I'm just trying to establish a common ground. Yeah, the, the common ground is... That I'm not God here to tell one. you what you don't know. I know, I know. But I'm not here to tell you. I'm trying you. to progress this. Yes. I think we're just stuck on one. Right. I want to move forward. Idolatry. 
Yes, so idolatry is false. I mean, it's not, uh, it's not according to uh, Christianity is false. You know, we don't have, uh, you know, we condemn idolatry just like God condemns idolatry. The first commandment God gave us, God is one, right? You shall have no other gods before me, right? That's from the If it is so, so important, Sam, yeah. tell me the six manifestations of idolatry. Um, you know what? I don't want this to be about idolatry. Sorry? I don't want this to be about idolatry because I'm... Oh, you don't want it. But that because this, I asked you the question, right? You asked me the question, the superiority of Islam. Yeah. And I'm saying to you, the superiority of Islam is to challenge the sin that is considered the worst sin against God. Yeah. And the question is this. Did Muhammad commit now, that I, sin? We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Yes, we're going to get to that. So you agreed with me that the central, central theme of Christianity is to challenge idolatry. Now, if this is a central theme, then we must understand ideology, um, idolatry in its completion. Go so, ahead. Uh, so you, you say, I'll give you no, 30 no, seconds. No, no. You give, no, no, I don't know the six uh, idolatry. You no, I think me. you should. No, okay, then I'll learn it today from you. Go no. ahead, please. Right. So if we say an idolatry. Please go ahead. First one, and yeah. please correct me. Yeah, go ahead. You correct me. First one is the worshipping of stones and idols and images. Not kissing any stones, right? Okay. Do we really have to go there? No, we don't. But uh, the, I'm do just trying to Do you really have to go there? Because you I mentioned just, stone, you know, so it just we talk, comes I didn't say, I didn't say stone. stone. I'm saying the yeah. concept of idolatry, it is one of them. It has six man manifestations. One is the worshipping of stones and idols and statues. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Do we, are we agreeing on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a classical. Okay, that's fine. Right. The second form of idolatry is to worship materialism. Okay. Yeah. To put materialism above God. Yeah. Okay. Fine. That. All right. That's a form of idol worship. Okay. Right. The other form of uh, idolatry is that a person worship a system or put a system above the laws uh, of God. Yeah. Okay. Good. Do you agree? Good. Yes. 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 You agree? Yeah, yeah. Fully. Right. The, huh? Yeah. Yeah. You sure? Yeah, yeah. All right. We agree. So the other form of idolatry is if a person, if a person worship their desires they worship their pleasures yeah i agree can we move to the next one i i'm agreeing but i just want why, to, why it's windy it's night i want to progress because i want to get it's windy the... night. let's go and get some something hot to drink no, no, no. And call it a night no 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 i'm just saying i don't want it to get it's stuck such it, it is such yeah. an important right. point that you don't want to talk about it no no i want to talk about idolatry, it idolatry i want to talk about it idolatry is yeah. the central theme of Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, and you want to brush past it quickly. If it's no. cool and you want to brush past it, I'm not I'm compelled. Not, I'm not, I'm not. Hand in the mic and let's go and get some hot. No, no, no. A hot I drink. asked you a question because I wanted to address a point, and we are getting away from it. No. That's why uh, you I asked me a question. About just that. I asked you to finish because you were on third or fourth already. So can you finish your point no. so we can move on? Yes. Yeah, go ahead, please. I'm listening. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, go ahead. So, so again, we talk about worshiping pleasures, hedonism. Yeah. Yeah. Hedonism, materialism, idol worship, statues, taking anything equal to God, man worship. Yeah. Man worship is idolatry. Yeah. And that comes right within your, your category. So the question is, any man or any human being or any of the creation that is held equal to God or above God, that is ideology. Yes. Idolatry. Right. Do you agree? Yes, I do. That any human being or the creation yeah. that is equal to God mm -hmm. or above God is idolatry. Yes, right. Yeah. Yes. So that is correct. Yeah, that's correct. Right. What is the objection now? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, are we oh, finished? Are we finished? Yes. We'll okay. stop there. Now, would I have some time to respond? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, my question was about Islam. Now, you brought in stuff about Christianity. What I want to do is first address the question that I asked before I move to the question that you just asked. Since we're talking about Islam and you're saying that uh, you know Islam is superior because it is above idolatry, right? Not idolatry. 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 Sorry. Not adultery. Yeah. Idolatry. Idolatry. That's what yeah. I Shirk. 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 Yes. Shirk. Believing, Shirk. In, oh. believing in. Oh, look, we are talking here. Go you're on. not invited in this conversation, so please oh, don't that, interrupt. That's a bit mean, isn't it? You're not. You're not invited oh, carry on. in this carry conversation. On. Sorry, so please carry don't on. interrupt. Carry on. Listen. So if that's the case, then any adultery. Idolatry. Idolatry. Yes. By any prophet would be shirk, right? Generally. 
pro it can, a profit it, it's a wrong statement you're making with all due respect because profits impossible to commit shuruk profits do not commit shuruk people commit shuruk not the prophets the prophets are chosen by god mm. they're the best of allah's creation and hence the reason why muslims have problems with the bible the reason why muslims say the bible is not the word of god because the bible says about prophets that prophets had incest with their children prophets drink khamar and they commit zina with their neighbors so if this allegation is made against prophets hence the reason why muslim says the bible is not the infallible word of god because any word that make these statements against prophets cannot be from god but then they Allah don't mubarak. Allah mubarak. let me let me answer it. but then they're not believing what the quran is saying because the quran is saying it's attesting the validity of the bible could Muhammad attested to the Bible, didn't he? Sorry? Muhammad attested to the validity. Is that a question or a statement? Uh, you can take it either way. All right, that's fine. Yeah? yeah? So if you take it, what the statement is, that the Quran says that the Bible is authentic, you should believe it. The people who are following are, are following the word of God. And Muhammad said it. So what you're saying is the Muslims don't believe the Quran when it says that. Oh, first of all, Almost every Muslim that I know, Allahu Alam, I know, will tell you the Quran make no reference to the Bible. The Quran refuse to recognize the Bible. It willfully refuse to recognize the Bible. Can you what show me the Quran verse that does that? That does what? It, Bible is not mentioned in the Quran. Now let me let me just say this. Let me just say this, Sam. You're a very intelligent man. The Bible does not even mention the Bible. So if the Bible has no testimony of itself, the Quran has no testimony of the Bible. It's completely ignored. So but what, what the Bible what does so what the Quran was, does? What, what the Quran Muhammad does holding in his hand what, what when the, he asked them what, Jews what, to bring what, the scriptures. Which what, scriptures the, the, the question, is he asking the Jews to bring out? The question is what the Quran does, the Quran addresses in every page of it, it addresses idolatry to raise and elevate the creation equal to God or above God. The Quran condemns that. The Bible condemns that. But the Quran does not recognize the Bible. And the Bible does not recognize itself because in the Bible, the word Bible is not in the Bible. So what you're saying is that Muhammad was not given the scriptures from the Jews when he asked them to bring the Torah to him. When he asked them to do that, and he put it on the on the on the on the seat, and he got up and put it on the judgment seat, like you know, he did that. What was he? Which book was he holding? And is that what you're said, saying, or is that what you're asking me? Uh, is that not what your Quran is saying? As I said before, the Quran makes reference to the Injil and the Torah, the Injil and the Torah, to all of the ulama of Islam of the past is not the Bible. The Bible is not the Injil and the Torah. The Injil and the Torah was pure scriptures, scriptures that calls Did to the... Muhammad have access can I finish, to please? Okay. Can, I, can I finish? The, the Injil and the Torah is not the Bible. The Bible is in opposition to the Injil and the Torah. The Injil and the Torah calls all of mankind to separate God from his creation and not to hold the creation equal to God. Now, according to the modern day Bible that we have today in the New Testament, it holds the creation equal to God and in some cases above God. So idolatry, idolatry, all the previous scriptures speak against idolatry. The language of the Bible, the language of the Bible is copied from the Greeks and the Romans who were the founding fathers of um, of uh, idolatry and paganism and it's written in a paganistic language very paganistic are you finished sorry carry, carry on just calm down right? I mean, uh, I'm talking to you very calmly sorry. so please uh, sorry stay calm no, no I'm not in, not intending to be rude no, no my apologies not, I'm just saying your, your um, passion yes sorry uh, so if uh, if you're saying that uh, at the time of Muhammad Injil and Torah were pure sorry was the was he given Injil and Torah in his hand Muhammad or did he place it on the seat where he was uh, who took the cushion up from under him and put it and said this is oh, i respect this and the one who, who sent this 
right? Did he not say that? Well, I will have to look into that closer. Yeah, he did. All right. Okay. And I'm saying it on camera, so if I'm lying, then you no, it's I'm not. A liar. A, no, no, it's not a lying. Yeah. It's not. So a, I'm not lying. This is in no, your Quran. This yeah. is in your script. It's not in the Quran. It just says hadith. Okay. Maybe it's in the hadith. It's not in Quran. Is it in the Sahih hadith? That's the question. You will be able to tell me. It is in the Sahih. Hadith. Which one? I don't have the. Oh, that's right fine. Now. That's fine. But that's I know fine. that it's in the same. Oh, right, that's okay. If it's not, then that means that I'm lying. And no, I'm not. no, no, no. So I won't anyway. say a line. No, no. I won't use that language. Right. right. Now, let me. A person can misquote. Okay. I misquote things from now, time. One thing I must say, you have made it abundantly clear, and I, you don't need to make another point again because I want to progress this. You know, I don't want to repeat the. You know, I don't want to go in circles. I already know what you're saying about the uh, uh, about the idolatry in in the Bible. Yeah, you're you're just saying that. It's just which is I I heard you. So please don't repeat it again. Why? Why not? Because we are doing the same thing over and over. It's called a, going in a circular. I don't want to have a circular argument. I want to progress it forward. Okay. I understand your. Are you offended by the topic of idolatry? No, I'm not. Of course not. Okay. I'm just offended by you repeating it ten million no. times. But you agree with me that idolatry is to take the creation and hold the creation yes. equal to God or yes. above God. You yes. agree with yes, that? Yes, yeah. So we're on the same page. Uh, well, to that extent, yes. Yes. But it's it's mean... not a crime to agree with me, you know. No, of course not. I'm and, not saying... and if you tell me the truth, I would agree with you, because uh, the truth uh, belongs to God. It doesn't belong to you. Yeah. Then here's the truth. Oh, go on. The, the truth is that the idolatry that you're talking about is not found in the Bible. I do not have... Idolatry is not found in the Bible. No. Let's make that quite clear. Okay. There is none in the in the Injil or the Torah that we have today or yesterday or a thousand years from now before, before this time or two thousand years or three thousand years before this time. Yeah? Never ever was it there or never ever will it be there or never ever has it ever been there. Idolatry. Idolatry. So the in concept is oh, the concept of idolatry is not in the scriptures. No no no. The the what you're saying is that the Injil and the Torah that we have today is not the pure Injil and Torah that was sent down from heaven, right? Is that no, 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 We're off track now. We're totally off track. Okay. We're entangled. We're like a big knot now. I thought we were on the same page. We are, you just made a statement, and I need to be very clear before we move forward. You said about idolatry not being in the scriptures. Am I hearing correctly? Okay, yeah, you might be uh, not getting my gist of it. What I'm saying is the Injil and the Torah that we have today does not have uh, any idolatry in there where it's making any human or any created being equal to God. That's what I'm saying. All right, you made that point. Okay. Never has it ever been before. Okay. And never will it be ever again. Right. Because I believe, as your Quran says, this is one thing I agree with Quran, one. Other, that's one thing I do agree. But you have many other things in Quran you agree with? Uh, no, I think this would be the only one. Oh, so it's only one thing of the Quran but you agree I would with? Agree with. Well, only one, right? Yeah. All right. And it says this, God's word cannot be changed. Allah's word cannot be changed. So if Allah is saying that... Where does I, it say that? Uh, your Quran says that. I don't have the reference. But again, okay. you know, I'm, I'm quoting it from your scriptures. If it's What do you the, think it means? Well, it means that nobody can change Allah's word. Yeah. So he protects his word. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it means, as long, at least to me. So, if Allah sends the Injil and the Torah, and if He doesn't protect it, then it's not the word of Allah, or Allah cannot protect it. That means He's not a God. Right. So I believe God protects His word, and if He has sent the Torah and the Injil, then He's going to protect it. Any time He fails to do so, He fails to be God. That's what I believe. Now, and I've already stated to you that um, nowhere in our Injil is there anything to do with uh, idolatry. We don't make any man equal to God. We don't make any created being equal to God. That's what I'm, I'm just saying. So I think do you, that. Do you have the Injil with you? Well, it's all online. So no, I'm, I'm asking you, do you have the Injil? I don't with have you? it on me right no, now. No. The question is. You, Sam, in the name of honesty, you follow the Bible. 
And you're trying to convince me that the Bible is the same as the Injil? No, what I was trying to do was to convince you that no, Quran I'm, is not from the God of the Bible. Yeah, we're going to get to that. I'm, yeah, that's I, yeah, what I that's asked a good you. point. That was the main yeah. well, the, that's, the topic. It's a good, it's a good so point. We have but segue the, from there to, to the no, Bible. I'm saying... Which I don't understand why yes. we're doing that. You follow the Bible. Okay. You follow the Bible. Yeah. You believe in the Bible. Yeah. You put your whole soul at risk okay, by believing ahead, in the please. Bible. Yes, yes, Just yes, one yes, second. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, right, by yeah. following the Bible. Yeah, sure. Now, in order to give some kind of validity to the Bible, you're trying to say that the Injil and the Torah is the Bible? Is that what you're trying to sell? Sell? What am I selling? I mean, sorry, bad language. Sorry, that's uh, infuriating. So please don't right. be infuriating. Right. Uh, otherwise, I would. I, I, you know that me. Uh, I can. I can just. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You can go. Yeah. Uncle Sam <laughs> yeah. on you. Yeah. And, you know, and yeah. Don't so let me do that. All right, all right. I take that back. Okay. So right. if you're saying that, uh, I, what I'm saying is that. No, but Quran honestly, are you that, trying to say that the Injil I'm, I'm and the Torah the Quran is the Bible? Says the Injil and Torah is the Word of God. Okay, that's what the Quran says, and the Quran says that God protects his word so either God protects his word or he doesn't because if he protects his word then he's protecting the Torah and the Injil now if you're saying that the are you saying that the Injil and the Torah I have right now are, are at home the Bible that I have is not the word of God because this was not the one that he has sent down to his prophets that we get this from are you saying that or are you saying that I have the Bible that was sent from God no what are you saying I'm responding to you by trying to say to you three things. The Bible, as we have today, it is not the Injil. The Bible that we have today is not the Torah. Now, if we want to understand what the Injil is and what the Torah is, we can have a conversation about that. Now, the, 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 the Quran, that uh, that's fine. Uh, that, the Quran makes reference that, to the Injil of the Torah. The Quran made reference to the Injil of the Torah. It recognizes it, recognizes right. it All right. as, as something of the past, right. but the Quran does not recognize it as a document that exists in its pure form today and in the future. Now, the Bible, my argument to you would be, it's only my argument, that the Bible is not the Injil, it's not the Quran. The Torah, it's not. And if you want, we can move on from that conversation. It's not the Injila. Yeah, I would rather move on because I think yes. I made my point and you made your point. Right. So, so we, 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 made, we, we made some interesting yeah. points. Right, right. We, but, we, but, but, but can I? But we're can I moving away. No, no, no. Can I introduce her? No, no, no. For the look, conversation. I asked a question, and that's why we're having the conversation. That you are a Muslim because you have accepted Islam. I want to know something about Islam that would convince me. You started with saying, you know, Allah and this. The thing is that Quran says that Allah is one. Does the Bible say Allah is three? What do you mean? How many gods are in the Bible that I have today? Oh, that's a, that's something for you to tell me. I'm you asking you. What I'm you're saying, you're is saying that shirk is a crime, right? Shirk is a is a highest. Uh, I, sin. I am not saying that. You agree Quran with me. Quran is saying that shirk you is agree. the highest thing. No, not Quran. You agreed with me that the worst sin, is shirk. which is. Treason against God is, is shirk, shirk yeah. idolatry. You agree? That's right. Yeah. So what do you come in to do now? You're going to disagree? You agreed with me. The worst crime, so you the agree unforgivable with me. crime, so you is agree with idolatry, me. shirk. We agreed. I don't want to talk over you. No, sorry. All right. So um, go on. Go on. Sir. So why don't we just keep it like very short? Uh, short no, bus, uh, right. So I'll, I'll say something, you say something, right, and then uh, yeah. so sorry. you're not trying to try to monopolize. I won't try to monopolize if you don't. Sorry, sorry. Because then I'm going to start apologize. screaming and then no, it'll no, get no. ugly. Okay, so let's not do that. All I'm going to say to you is, of course, shirk is a is a, is a haram, right? In the Bible and in the in the Quran, right? So anybody saying that there is anything created is equal to God would be committing shirk. But if somebody said that, hey, by the way. What you might think is a man, he's actually God and man, then it's not a shirk. That's what I'm saying. If Jesus was a man and not a God, then he would not be, then it would be shirk because then you're worshipping a man. But what do Christians believe? Christians believe Jesus is God and man. So therefore, there is no shirk because we are still worshipping God. Now, let's get that aside because that now we're going to Christianity. This was not about that. This was about because you accepted it so there was something there. I accepted what you said you uh, you're a Muslim right 
I am a Muslim. Yeah. So you accepted Islam. Hmm. So I'm asking you, what is it about Islam that you would sell to others who are non-Muslims like you were before? That, hey, you should be a Muslim. Here's the reason. What is it? I, I find it distasteful for me as a human being to accept the creation as God. What is a man or a woman, a stone, a rock, materialism, and, and I would agree with you there. I, I find I that do, I, do I find it I, ridiculous. I think that's right. Now, I so think the that's question right. of man worship. Yeah. The question of man worship yeah. has a long history. Mm. Human worship has a long history. Mm. It has a long history. It has, it has deep roots in paganism, in the European culture. It has a deep roots in in um, in, in Egypt. It had deep roots in the Persian okay, culture. Got it, got it. Yeah. So, so, so the question of man worship yeah. has a long history. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. me okay. as a person, yeah, yeah. I take big issue with man worship hence the reason why i would find islam to be superior to any other ideology which, that's let me can i finish islam is superior to any other ideology that supports man worship i would be too i would agree with you i wouldn't want, want any religion that worships a man right yes sir and that's why i just made the point that jesus if he's a man then i wouldn't be worshiping him all right but then can i ask a question yeah. True or false? What? Some of the early Christians. Okay. Let's, okay let's, I'm not going to answer that. All right, you, know you don't have to answer. No, no, I'm not. But I'm am, not I free even to, no, am I free to? Am I free to? No. No, no I don't have the that. freedom. Okay, no. okay, okay. Okay, no, sir. All right. Because okay, here's sir. The thing. Here's the okay, thing. No, okay that's fine. No, listen. I take because, shut down. Listen, because yes. it takes us away from the topic. That's why. Not because I don't want to answer it, but because it takes us away. Because but I can make a comment. I'm only making a comment based on what you said. Go ahead. My comment based on what you said is to say some people try to purport the idea Christians meaning all Christians or Christianity believe Jesus is God and not a man some people purport that idea the fact of the matter the fact of the matter in the name of honesty and we could be honest or not not all Christians believe Jesus is God some Christians are Unitarian and some are Trinitarian there are Unitarian Christians who are here they're Unitarian Christians in the world, and they're Unitarian Christians who exist long before the Trinitarian Christians who do not believe Jesus is a God equal to the Father or the Master. So the question is, as though Trinity represents all of Christianity, that's not a fact. All right, you made your point, right? Yeah. I can address it by just saying this. So Ahmadiyyas are Christians, right? I mean, are Muslims, right? Ahmadiyyas, you know Ahmadiyyas, right? I don't know much about them. Okay, Ahmadiyyas believe that, uh, you know, uh, there's a Mahdi is coming and all that stuff. Uh, they're considered non-Muslims in some of the countries like mm -hmm. Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So would you consider them as Muslims? First of all, Ahmadiyya mm -hmm. is a phenomenon that is much more in the subcontinent. Mm -hmm. I don't have the full knowledge right. and the understanding of their roots. And this and the, phenomenon I've, I've, that you I've, just, I've, just talked can about. Can I answer, please? I'm now coming to know one or two Ahmadiyyad people, but I cannot comment on something I don't know. Yeah. But the question is this. In the name of truthfulness, in the sitka yahdil al-birri, truthfulness needs to righteousness, and righteousness leads to paradise. Now, in the name of truthfulness, the truth of the matter is, and I might be wrong, not all Christians, as some Christians try to make you believe, Christianity believes that Jesus is not a man, he's God. Not all Christians believe that. Some Christians are Unitarian and others are Trinitarian, and the Unitarian Christians came before the Trinitarians. Got you. All right, thank you. So, like I said... True or false? Uh, I want no comment. All right, oh, that's right? fine. That's because fine. remember, that's fine. I said that's I wanted okay. to move away from this. It's yes, not the conversation. Yes. Because yes. I feel like we keep going back to Christianity, where we are talking about how great Islam is. So why you keep going to Christianity when you're supposed to be telling me how great Islam is? Uh, the answer to that is because I'm speaking with a Christian who speaks about Christianity. You just made a comment about Christianity saying it is not shirk if you believe Jesus is God, worshiping Jesus is not shirk. You made that comment and I'm saying to you, number one, not all Christians are Trinitarians. So As a matter of fact, me. historically, if you look at the Christian history, historically, the Trinitarians used to pursue and persecute and kill the Unitarians. All right. Okay. True or false? No comment. No comment. All right. All right. Now listen to this. 
Is there anything great about Islam, yes or no? I think there's a lot of great. Okay, can you tell me one greatest thing in your mind about Islam? That's all of this question. This whole conversation is about that. Can we please stay on the topic and not go to Christianity? Please. Because I only respond to your questions about Christianity and we have stood here for 30 minutes already, I think, and we haven't addressed the point that I wanted to ask you. What's the greatest thing about Islam that you would tell me? One, of the, one of the greatest things yes. about Islam. Yes, please, is, in your mind, yes. in your experience. In, in my mind, in my heart, what I love is that Islam separates the concept of shirk and the concept of idolatry, which is in line with all the previous scriptures, the resistance to Which don't idolatry. exist anymore. The over, all the previous scriptures don't exist anymore. According to you, the one that I have doesn't, uh, is, is not the real one, right? Right. So that's one. But that of, that yeah. fake one that yeah. I have, does it have Muhammad mentioned in it? Th that's one of the uniqueness. The uniqueness of Islam above other faiths is one of the uniqueness is that. Now, is that it have a very strong no zero tolerance for idolatry. Now, the second point, we can go to the second point. One of the things that I find is great and superior about Islam is the unaltered, unique presentation, preservation of the Quran. Ah, okay, got you, got you, got you. And then Uthman, he burned the manuscript, doesn't affect that at all, does it? Am I allowed to answer the question? If all of the Quran was to be burnt now, all of the physical Quran written, Muslims let me finish. Have, Can I finish? Have memorized let, let, let me finish. Memorized oh my God, Sam, let me finish. You asked me a question. If all of the physical written must are must gone have tomorrow, was, tomorrow would, they're gone. Must have were to be burnt, they're destroyed, gone, destroyed completely. The Quran will still live because it they have memorized exist. the Quran. No, 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 no. no. no you why, don't understand. Why would it, you why don't would understand. It, okay, why would it survive? You don't, you don't understand. How would it survive? The Quran will survive, uh -huh. number one, because the Quran was established mm. upon oral, oral traditions. traditions. Nice. Now, the no. Quran has been memorized mm -hmm. from cover to cover mm -hmm. 1400 years ago, mm -hmm. globally all over the world. Glo globally. Well, hold, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Globally. Hold on. Well, 1400 years ago, Islam was globally. I'm saying now globally, okay. it is Please, global. Yeah. So, yeah. I, so I'm not misunderstanding. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So let's go I, back I, 1400 years ago, not today. Right. Let's just talk about 1400 years ago. It was preserved, right? Sorry? That's, it was preserved, right? No. Orally, oral tradition was keeping the Quran preserved, right? Not just oral. So you have the oral tradition, mm. you have the practical reinforcement of those oral traditions. What does that mean? I don't know. I'll, I'll tell you what it means. So, for example, the Quran may give an order mm. to pray. Oh, okay. So just a minute. Just following a minute. the Quran. Just a minute. Uh, yeah, yeah, it gives yeah. an order okay, to pray. You, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we pray. Yeah. You know, there are some Muslims yeah, yeah, yeah. have never read a book on prayer, mm. but they know how to pray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Yeah. Orally. Yeah. Now, you will know as much as me, Sam, yeah. that there are certain cultures mm subcontinent African cultures yeah. where there are traditions that has been preserved for hundreds of years without without a book now if you look at a menu my mother knows how to cook a particular dish but she has never read a menu book or her mother never give a menu right. book you but they have the oral traditions the point is made. Oh, yeah. Can, the point is me, right. you agree on oral traditions no I'm going to counter it now if you allow me to no, but you don't want me to finish on the virtues of oral traditions and how it has been preserved up to today in other aspects of life. questions on it, if I may be allowed to Sure. Go on, Sam. All right. Because so Allah's plan to preserve your Quran was oral tradition, correct? Was that Allah's plan? Are you making a point? No, I'm asking a no, question. No, you make your point, please. Okay. So Allah did not ask for Muslims to write the Quran down, did they? The question or the point? Yeah, it is a question. No, you make your point, Sam. Can I ask you a question or not? You it's can. Fine. So but please ask the question. You ask, I ask okay. you just a minute. Right. So Allah... Just a minute, make plan. your point, Sam. Okay, the Allah's plan is for oral tradition to carry on his Quran throughout the centuries. 
because there is an oral tradition that memorizes the Quran and then anything happens to anybody, there is always Quran is available because all the Muslims are memorized. Unless you kill each and every Muslim in the world, that is a Hafiz, by the way. Not all of the Muslims are Hafiz, that's not true. Most of them are, some of them are actually, it's not all of them. Are you a Hafiz? Make your point, sir. So most Muslims are not Hafiz. That was the case back 1400 years ago. And uh, I don't know if you know the, who Uthman was or what, uh, what was happening when they came to him and said, you got to write it down because the people are dying in the war in uh, Yamama or something like that up in the Armenia area. So they came back to, uh, I think it was uh, somewhere in Basra or Iraq or somewhere. They were having a prayer and they were all reciting different Qurans and stuff. And they came to him and said, hey, listen, you got to stop this. We don't want to end up like the Jews and the Christians that have different this and that because these are all have they all different Qurans they're, they're, they're reciting and, and this is going to create. They were fighting each other. Yeah. Can you please unify us by creating one Musa, oh, uh, one Quran? So he goes back to Hafsa. You know who Hafsa was? I'm here. I'm going to come next week. Do you know who Hafsa make, It doesn't make a difference. Fine. Make so your he point. gets a copy and he gives it to him. Anyways, so after he he uh, compiles a Quran in one Musab, you mean in one uh, version, uh, uh, what do you call dialect, Qureshi dialect, I, I I believe so. I don't know which one, but one of the uh, dialects he selected. He burned all the other uh, manuscripts. So why did he burn those manuscripts? Do you know? That's your point. I'm asking the question. No, yeah. You're asking, but that, is that your point? Okay, I'm asking. Okay, my point is this: if either Allah planned for the Quran to be preserved orally, or he planned for it to be written down by Uthman. Which was it? I'm at, that's my point. Go ahead. Answer. You said oral tradition. You gave me all the virtues of oral tradition, which I didn't ask for. And now the question is, if Allah has selected the oral tradition to carry on his his last message to humanity to be preserved by oral tradition then why did a man overrule Allah by writing it down or did Allah command him to write it down can I approach that by saying oral traditions together with a written document together with a practical demonstration of what those oral traditions are is the Islamic history has always been comprising of oral transmission, a document, and a practical example confirming the oral tradition as well as the document. So you have three references, oral, written, practice. This is it. Now, coming back to the topic which you wanted to discuss. Now, other faiths like Christianity or Judaism doesn't have. Does it? I don't want to discuss. Really, this is not about Christianity. Can we have the discussion about? It? I'm talking about the greatness of Islam. No, but I'm talking about that freedom of the, expression, freedom of speech. No, no, no. But you're getting off our topic. All right. Okay. All right. So the topic is Islam, the greatness of Islam. I'm trying to figure out the greatness of Islam. Maybe I've missed something. Mm. So maybe I can ask a Muslim because you made a conscious decision. Because the thing is though unique about somebody who converts to Islam is because they're making a conscious decision. 90% of the Muslims, they didn't make that decision. They were just born Muslims. And they were just fed Islam since they were childhood. And I know because I grew up with Muslims, so how they were. Okay, so so that's why I thought maybe you found something that you, that convey, but you're saying, well, the thing is, it's about this and that. And no, I didn't say this and that. I said the uniqueness and the superiority of Islam, number one, is it's pure strong position against idolatry yeah. and secondly secondly yeah. uh, when you ask me about the uniqueness of islam mm. i talk to you about the preservation and the uniqueness of the al-quran how it pre preserved tr it started an oral tradition it went into a written document and it was also well, established it, 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 it was also just, just a minute okay. and it was also a practical example as i said there are many islamic practices that people did not read, but they practice it because it was upheld right. as a practice. All right, great. So uh, the question is, as the second point I made, the original, 
the preservation, the uniqueness of the oral traditions where you do not have the same in many other faiths. Yeah. You have already agreed with that. Yeah. How are you doing, my friend? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, my friend, here is the thing. This is the main thing, and I think we are gonna we can conclude go it after. Yeah. This all right. Okay, yes. This is the last. You wrap one. up. You wrap up. Sam. Okay. No. 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 But this is my last question. So after this, we're gonna wrap up. Okay. okay. So was what religion was Muhammad following before he was 40 years old? Go ahead. Please. He's stuck. He's stuck. His mother and Sorry. his father, he was following a pagan religion. I'm trying to finish, I'll be trying to wrap up. So, you know, we don't want to start a new conversation. So let's just... Uh, Are you leaving? I want to talk to you. Okay, I will talk to you, but let me just finish this conversation. And then, and then we're going to have a conversation. Please, go ahead. Let me... Because there's something you said about shirk. It's the unforgivable sin. Yeah? If, if you die on it. All right. So it's unforgivable if you die on it. Uh, so if you're, it's forgivable then. Well, well, I'm saying to you, if it's not forgivable oh, if you die in sorry, it. Sorry, I apologize. But I'm sorry. sorry. No, I didn't want to interrupt. But no, no, I understand your point. So you're right. saying that since Muhammad didn't die as a mushrik, but he did commit shirk by being a pagan, right? What was he? Was it? What, what, what was his religion? That's why I asked you what his religion was before he was. Because according to your uh, historians and everybody, he was a pagan. Okay. There is a Kilby who wrote a book and he said, you know, he was following the religion. And yeah. he himself said it, where he said that, um, you know, I was following the religion of my people at that time. And I did a sacrifice to Uzza. That means he was doing idolatry. Mm -hmm. So you know, idolatry is the main thing. Idolatry, idolatry. not idolatry. idolatry. I'm sorry. Uh, idolatry. I no, 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 you're fine. Okay. I do so, the same so thing as well. Idolatry is the thing that you said, first you said it's unforgivable. Now you said if you die in it, it's unforgivable. But then if you die in any sin, that's unforgivable. Uh, it's like, it, all right, no, I'm not going to go into that too much. But let's say that's the case. Did, okay, so after 40 years, after he became a prophet, after he became Muhammad, because was he born Muhammad or was he, did he become Muhammad after 40? Was his name always Muhammad? Because with the meaning of Muhammad is the praised one. Now. Any man who says he's the praised one, he's equating himself to Allah. Because there's only one praised one, that's God. He's only praiseworthy. No man is praiseworthy. So if you say, I'm praiseworthy, you're equating yourself to God. So if Muhammad says, my name is praiseworthy, I'm God. He's saying, I'm God. That's false. That's shirk. So first of all, there's one shirk. There's another shirk. When he got the satanic verses, he was committing shirk. Sorry? When he got the satanic verses, he was committing shirk. Because he says, those three daughters, uh, their intercession is to be desired for. And then later on he said, that was from Satan that put those words in my mouth. They were not coming from God. If, if Satan can put words into Muhammad, that can be only because in the previous belief, God has said that Satan cannot have control on, over anyone except for those who are his. So if, say, if Satan got control over Muhammad, that would, according to the Quran, make Muhammad Satan's because Satan has only control over those who submit to him, according to your scriptures. Can you please tell me how Muhammad was not a pagan and a mushrik with all this what I've just said? Well, you said to me, you're going to make your statement and wrap it up here. Yeah, this and is the last question. No, I said. no, I said no, no, no. that's not what you said. That's I not what you say said. It. It's in you the said, camera. You it's said, camera. okay, that's fine. Well, I apologize. I've misheard. Right. But for what I've heard, you said to me, it's getting cool. We're going to wrap up now and I'm going to make this last statement. Uh, no, now, that was what you said. I take, take that on board and I think we can resume right. that conversation All on right. another episode. I, I, I wouldn't have any problem. So, in that. your final summary, final words, final thoughts. What is your final thoughts on the I, If I was to look at Islam, if I, had, if, if I just say, okay, I don't believe in Christianity, I'm going to look for the truth. Islam would be the last thing that I would look at. I mean, I would, a lot of, I'm not saying it because of my bias. I'm saying it because a lot of atheists, there was an atheist here and he was telling me, look, you know what? I'm an atheist. I'm not even a Christian. And everything these guys are saying makes no sense. Mm. 
that doesn't, I mean, even, and they, or either they're lying, because even as an atheist, I know certain things, that they come here and say, oh, I don't know, where did you see that? Show it to me, and this and that. And they act like they don't know, whereas atheists even know that Muslims say that, and they preach that all okay. the time, and it comes from their scriptures. Mm. So, that the thing for when somebody comes to me and say, well, I found uh, Islam to be the truth, I was a Christian before, I'm like, really, dude? I mean, how much research did you do into Islam? to not know that Muhammad means the praised one, and the praised one cannot be a man. Mm. You find Islam distasteful to you? No, I find Islam completely and utterly satanic. Okay. Not distasteful, yes. that's another thing. I it's mean, too light of a word to say. It's too light for right. word. It's, it's completely and utterly satanic. Satanic, yes. Yeah. That's your final that's word? That's my final, final word today, yeah. because the question that I started with is for you to tell me something about Islam that I have missed and your main qu argument that I heard was that Islam is against idolatry and I've just proven to you that Muhammad had completed, completely committed shirk before he was a prophet and even after he was a prophet and that means that he's a mushrik. Right. The other thing that his death of Muhammad was a punishment prescribed by his Allah mm. for a false prophet because if he said anything he would cut off his artery right. iota and his iota was severed when he said to her and said uh, to his wife uh, Aisha you know I feel like the the food that I've eaten from Khyber mm. it's like it's uh, severed my iota so wow. I mean really that uh, it, it's like you have to be completely blind mm. to not see like it's like day and night if I stand here and say oh it's a beautiful day yeah I like this beautiful sunlight or something and I'm standing here it's like really completely against God I mean right. if there's anything against God it's Islam right that's all I'm saying yeah. that's it that's your final thoughts yeah thank you so much thank you for your time thank you for Sam. Appreciate you it. did very well thank yes you thank much. you Take care.